Good morning. Welcome back to Better Together Life. I'm Kelly Brotherton and I have Georgia with me and today we're going to take you on the garden tour that I never actually wanted to show you. But this and, is your idea. Yeah, so here's why I was telling Bo, hey, what if we did like a very real life view of the garden because right now most of our friends are popping off with amazing vegetables or telling stories about what's been hard to grow. We're going to tell you about how we haven't touched our garden in the last three months and actually this morning is a really good example. We had a whole plan. Let's get out here at you know 7 a.m. Let's get to work and I hope you can enjoy this video in a way that makes you feel like gardening is for real people and not perfect people. And uh, as you enjoy the sun directly on my face, instead of the perfect shadows that we were thinking of this morning, it's because we have this sweet little baby. So I wanna show you our garden that we haven't touched in three months and what's growing that we can actually enjoy <laughs> and what's growing for the next couple of seasons. So come join me in my garden. So this garden is 2,000 square feet. It's one of the first places we started growing things on the property. And when I got pregnant with Georgia, I knew that toward the end, there was gonna be a time where I just couldn't tend this garden. We couldn't give it the attention that we needed to grow things well in this spring and summer season. So there are some things that are growing and we might as well just call it out for what it is. We don't have the lush green grass or even wood chips that we once had. Instead, lovely wild carrots. The weeds are growing very, very well in this garden. It is great because at first we thought, okay, what are we gonna do with this garden? We've gotta really maintain at least the walking space. And instead, everywhere else on our property is brown. And I'll show you some of the reasons this space is green and what we've done to keep it that way, to at least preserve it for the next season. So if you're in a place where you're waiting for a time where you can get to work, either in your garden or on your homestead, I hope this gives you a little bit of hope to show you what can be done while you're waiting. A few things have paid dividends in the garden and I'm so glad that we planted them last year. One of them is strawberries. In fact, I just saw a couple juicy ones. And we've been snacking on these probably since April, which is pretty exciting. I just learned that they're not quite as true a perennial as we thought. In fact, I thought, oh, you plant strawberries and they just last forever. But then I was learning from Ruth Ann Zimmerman on Instagram that these are actually grandmother plants and mother plants and baby plants. And it's the baby plants that continue to produce. So you, you have a baby plant each new season and they shoot out from these like tentacles. It's why we call it the octopus of the garden, but they shoot out from the mother plant and then the baby plants are what continue to produce. So some of the older ones are a little bit rough and worn through. And then if we get really close down here, we're gonna see the baby ones are the ones that are flowering and producing fruit. So that's really exciting that even though we didn't produce the, or even though we didn't plant this this year, it's still growing and giving us an enjoyable time in our garden. Another perennial that we put in was this passion flower. So these are really beautiful flowers. We'll, when they're in full bloom, when they're wide open, we'll save these, we'll pluck them and then save them for tea and dry them. If we leave them on there, they're gonna keep growing for uh, fruit at the base of the flower. So these are just the blooms that come at the end of the fruit. One thing we did do before Georgia came was plant some low maintenance peppers. And so this is something that we can keep harvesting. And these were just starts from, I think, Home Depot. I'm a big fan of planting starts. And if you don't have them in your house, then go ahead and get them from the store. Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> I've got a lot growing over here. Aside from the wild carrots are these herbs. And this is lemon balm with spider wart growing in the middle of it, right? These are such lovely weeds, but these grow all over our property. And this is lemon balm, kind of a minty herb. It's one of my top 10 favorite aromas to grow in my garden. And then if you just come out to your garden and you have herbs, you can just smell them. But this is cool because it came back after the winter 
I can clip these off and dry them and I can put them in tea or I can create salve or tinctures with them and that's a really huge thing if you can get herbs into the ground then they're going to do their job year after year. There's also <laughs> some volunteers that have shown up this year. One of them is this loofah that I just can't quit. So this loofah, even though it's totally volunteer, we probably won't get dozens and dozens of loofah like we did last summer. This is kind of a high maintenance plant where we live because so many stink bugs come and lay their eggs and then totally destroy the plant. So instead, we're not gonna maintain it. We're not gonna try and get fruit from it this year. This is gonna grow. It's gonna help cover the ground, right, where we have got beds growing and then it just decided to climb. So I guess it's also gonna give us a little bit of shade and it'll turn into organic matter for the compost. So nothing has to be wasted, even though it's not something intentional that we need or put to good use for our, our family, it can still be used either for chickens or just to go straight into the compost and give us more organic matter for the future because we know right now it's really hard to get a high quality dirt for your garden if you're bringing it in. Instead, we're gonna work towards sustaining it ourselves and making our own dirt. So let me take you to something that I'm really excited about because this has been the longest game in the garden. This is kind of a food forest. <laughs> it's way taller than I ever imagined that it would be in this space, but here's what's really cool. These are all producing trees that will either be food for people, like our fig tree, or it will be food for animals like the hybrid poplar and the willow in the back. There's also mulberry up here. We've got blackberries, blueberries. Several of our herb species are back here as well, I think. Peach and peach and I pear. think we might have gotten this little girl to sleep. Mission accomplished, guys. Way to go. Thanks for all your good vibes. <laughs> so back here, we've grown these from starts. And then uh, we'll take cuttings, we've already started a few of them, cuttings from these taller trees and then propagate them into more. And so eventually we're going to have an entire orchard of foods and fodder trees that we can use for our property, for our livestock, for our family. And back there, there's also some peaches and is it pears? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got pears back there too. They're in the front. So all of these are growing in just these buckets. I love this use what you've got, even if you don't have what you need. These are um, molasses buckets from livestock. So we got these from a local rancher and just cut holes in the bottom of them for drainage. And then we use these to grow out all of these amazing trees. I have to say that the secret gardener in our garden is obviously the hardest working one, our drip irrigation system. This is why our garden is green right now. But we are in 90 degree heat today and it's only eight o'clock. It's gonna be about 103, and we've been in 100 degree temperatures since the beginning of May, which is just kind of extra for our area. So in Texas, when you look at our whole property, everything is brown, but this little oasis is bright, vivid, rich, lush green, and it's because the drip irrigation is coming into the garden and doing its job even when we can't be here. I think systems have saved our property when things like a baby come or a brand new cow comes and we have to take our attention away from tending the land directly to tending it indirectly like growing a new farmhand or having a cow that's going to produce more for our property. I think the smartest thing that we've done in the garden was what we set up so that we'd be ready for fall. So yes to all the perennials, which we're just coming back and honestly gives me life to say, I'm actually not totally in control of the garden. The garden is gonna wild itself and it's gonna grow what it grows. But we tarped a couple of areas in our garden and this is gonna set us up for the future. Um, we actually even tarped it with an old rug. So, Tarping this means that the ground is going to rest, the worms are going to come up, the soil is going to help to kind of regenerate with all that vivid life that soil has differently than just plain old dirt, right? You've got life and microorganisms in it that help your garden grow. A lot of you do tarp or should be tarping for the winter, 
But if you're like us, the summer might be the more profitable time to tarp because your dirt is gonna suffer the most in Texas heat and summer. So we're in a place that's really dry, loving the water, the drip irrigation or sprinkler in this small concentrated area. But this is the greatest struggle for us. And so if you can get tarps on your garden in the time where it's struggling most, you're gonna do a lot of your best work. So even over my shoulder, we've got these in-ground beds or these rows where we'll put tomatoes and corn going into the fall season. So in August, we're gonna get our hands in the dirt again and I'm really, really excited about it. It's probably 15 degrees cooler just since I stepped into the shade and I'm really excited about that because these banana trees we grew in a row. They're just starts from Bo's parents. They grew them in their backyard. His mom has an incredible green thumb. So she said, just try it, see if it works. These are growing on their second season here and in the row, they're going to protect the low shrub from our afternoon sun. So it'll get morning sun from the east and then as it as the sun moves across the sky, we're gonna get protection from our harsh Texas afternoon sun right here and through the back of the garden. This is one of the things when I'm sharing good, bad, and ugly, I would say the garden is super ugly right now. It's not something I'm like, yay, let's post this beautiful thing on inspirational Instagram. This is where the hard work happens in the places that you make things work when it doesn't seem really doable when it doesn't seem beautiful. But we do have one little corner that's kind of beautiful and I wanna show it to you before we wrap up this time together. This is our garden sweet spot. It makes me super happy and feel less like a failure. And so if you need to grow a tiny garden sweet spot or just a little pot on your porch so that you feel like, hey, I'm not totally losing at this garden game, even when you don't have time. Here's what we did a few weeks before the baby was born, and it's given us a lot of harvest in such a compact area. We built these Vigo garden beds and just planted really easy, low maintenance things in it. So there's some moonbeam tomatoes growing here. We have a huge variety of peppers, and I think I pulled off about 40 or more jalapenos just the other day. So we can already start preserving those. I can can them in like a jelly. I can freeze dry them. I can set them aside for long-term storage so that we make the most out of our garden. I'm super pumped about the herbs that are growing in here. I've got lavender here. I'm about to turn this sage into a sage salt. And then we'll have this, again, making the most out of our harvest, even in a small garden. The big trick here was that this is right outside our front door. I know it sounds dramatic and silly that just crossing the front driveway made it harder to get to the other garden, but it really did. I think this space is like a peaceful spot for me. It's like a joyful moment when I step outside the door and I look at the cows or we're out here trying to chase a calf back into its pen because this was so on purpose. This was really intentional for us to put these two beds here. And a lot of people will say, oh, if I get more space, then I'm gonna plant a huge, massive garden. But if you can't tend that garden, then you're not only going to feel frustrated that you aren't producing the fruit that you want, but you're also gonna feel discouraged to continue gardening. This was my secret sauce to continue gardening this summer. It's in the shade of the house. It shows how the zone one actually works. The closer to your house, your farmhouse or your, your homestead activities are, the more you're gonna work them. And so this has been watered and tenderly loved every day by the kids or by me or by Bo. And because of that, we're producing more peppers. We're producing more of these tomato flowers than anything in the other garden is just because we're here every day. We think about this space every day. We see this space multiple times a day. So it's getting exactly what it needs from us and we're getting exactly what we need from it. If this encourages you in any way, I have to tell you that we're not giving up. Just because our feet are not in the dirt and our fingers are not grimy in the garden every day, we're still doing things every day. Finley just brought me this loofah flower and then we had a lesson about the different sizes and how the pollinators are gonna get great stuff from our loofah every single day throughout this hot season. We're 
making a delicious compost tea and learning how to do that really efficiently, even though it's like blistering on the face of the sun here, we're still doing things that are manageable for us. And so we're learning how to make compost tea for the first time. And we're transforming that cow manure pile that's been building up since September into compost tea for the garden. And inside we've got little starts happening right at your kitchen window. I hope you guys have something like this in your house too. These are sweet potato starts literally off of our sweet potatoes from the CSA. So we just let them grow out and forgot about them in the cabinet and then turned them into future sweet potatoes. We've also got cuttings from our poplar that we're gonna turn into new baby trees in just a few months. You don't have to be in your 2,000 square foot garden to make the most of your summer harvest. You can do small spaces, you can do small projects that set you up for the next season. Waiting doesn't mean wasting, it just means getting ready for what comes next. I always talk about a working farm kitchen and how there's always gonna be a project going on. You're seeing this in between projects because right after we filmed that Ikea kitchen tour, our dishwasher straight up died. Like my mom was here for two weeks with the baby, my mom leaves, and we have no dishwasher. So everything was done by hand until this brand new dishwasher arrived two days ago. So we're still playing catch up. 